Hello and welcome to Oat Milk everybody, or if this is your first time, hello, nice to meet you. So it's getting to be about that time of year and there's one thing on so many people's minds and that's the holidays. So I wanted to talk today about Christmas and gift giving as a minimalist. So a little bit of background first. I grew up celebrating not the Christian Christmas, but the consumer Christmas, as in um, my family wasn't religious, but we got a Christmas tree, we changed presents, we had a lot of those kind of traditions that came from the Christian Christmas, but without, uh, I never went to mass or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I, I say Christmas, but I'm more attached to like solstice now, but the things I'm going to talk about today apply to gift giving as a minimalist in general, um, but sort of through the lens of that kind of Christmas, but um, hopefully a little more widely applicable. So the first thing, it's obvious, but it bears repeating and that's lists. You have your list to Santa as a child for a reason. So when I was little, my grandma would make these beautiful hand painted lists with different themes and they were just she's she's a wonderful artist in general but the christmas lists they were so beautiful and one of my favorite things about christmas as a child is going over to my grandma's house and writing the things that i wanted on these beautiful lists and like looking at what everybody else wanted and we'd have sections for our pets and we'd write like the pets want world peace and things like that so that was very fun um and as I got older, I tried my hand at making hand painted lists, which wasn't actually bad. It went pretty well. But now what uh, me and my immediate family do is we have a list on Google Docs and we can all write whatever we want. You know, if you find the perfect thing that you need at 2 a.m., you can put the link on there and see what everybody else has put and also see like when things were changed so you know if something is from last year or not but we've been using this list for like four years now i think i don't know um but it works pretty well because you can put the link to something or you can put links as examples and you can like specify because it's a google doc you can say oh something like this or i want this specific thing and that's super super handy uh highly recommend this for anyone because you can also like add things to it throughout the year and either take them off if you change them your mind or like think about it or you can use it for birthdays so i think it's just called like family gift list on google docs but it's highly recommend um throughout the year any gift giving holiday it works and i think there's some criticism of lists as like taking the surprise out of presents and i guess that is a somewhat valid criticism um i guess if you put enough things on and you'll be surprised like which ones you get but also, I don't know, I think surprise is something that people have a lot of nostalgia for around Christmas especially. Because when you're a kid, you just want stuff mostly. You know, you don't have like goals you're working on <laughs> other than growing up. Um, I don't know, maybe I should give my kids more credit. But you're sort of surprised by everything and excited by everything and that's the magic of Christmas. But as an adult, I feel like the surprise isn't what matters there. It's like the traditions and the nostalgia and like you can have the nostalgia for surprise, but um, you can be surprised about specifically what it is or that's there's still the fun in unwrapping it, even if you have ideas about what might be in the box. Um, but also I feel like that's part of the fun sometimes is planning. <laughs> that's just me, I like planning. But, um, so yeah, like my parents, they have a lot of things. They don't, they don't have a lot of needs for things. Although, um, spoiler, I'm getting my mother measuring cups because hers are all broken and lost to the sands of time. Um, so that's not a surprise, but, um, the present that I'm getting for my dad was a surprise and there was a lot of fun in finding something that would work for him. But that's like specifically for people that have a lot of things already. And so you can have a little more fun branching out and what to get them. Um, but what I'm getting my mother feeds nicely into my second point, which is to ask questions about people, about, about gifts people want. Because I feel like we have this idea that 
Christmas presents are the biggest secret. And I think that's true for little kids. Like, I remember when I was little, it was always like a big like, oh, you can't go in anybody's closets or up on shelves around Christmas time because you might find your presents on accident. Um, and first of all, wrap things sooner if that's going to be an issue for you. Um, but secondly, it's more worth it this, for lists and asking questions. It's more worth it to get people something that is going to work for them, especially as adults. Like kids go things go through things pretty quickly because they're growing. But as adults, it's so important, I think, to get people things that will work for them for a while to come. Um, because then they it's a win win, like you give them a functional gift and they get something that is useful in their life. But also, I feel like it this will then help to defeat the the, the demon of I can't get rid of this thing, it was a gift. Because I know a lot of people really struggle with that. Um, not can't can't get rid of something because someone gave it to them, even if it like hasn't served them in forever, if ever. Um, so yeah, asking people questions about either things they have on their list or like, ah, oh, I noticed you were looking at that thing. What do you think about it? Um, so yeah, I asked my mom what she wants out of her measuring cups. And so now I am better able to get that present for her, knowing that it's gonna be something that will be really functional for her in her life. Instead of just getting, you know, what I might want in measuring cups, which could be totally different. Um, and in this case it was. So it's, I'm really glad that I asked her that question because now I can be pretty confident that these measuring cups are gonna be a good choice for her. All right, um, so my next point is kind of related to this too, and that's um, how this relates to other gift giving holidays. Uh, we have a tradition in the US at least, I don't know how much this applies to other places, but um, everybody spends like all of their money and like goes into debt like the holiday season, um, mainly for Christmas. People buy things that they cannot afford and you know, who knows if those presents are going to be actually well received or not. But people spend so much money over Christmas and then there's the like New Year's tightening of belts and like recommitting to lofty goals with no plans. Um, and that applies to finances as well for Christmas. Um, everybody like spends so much and there's so much money put into like advertising especially around Christmas. Um, and so I think in my ideal world I would only do experiences for Christmas, uh, no presents, shocking, right? And then put more money into birthday presents for people or other gift giving holidays or just buying people gifts because you saw a thing that would really work for them because there's a good gift, not for any special occasion. Um, because that way you're better able to sort of spread out the expenses uh, which is good for like your personal finances, I mean potentially depending on your budget, and also better so there's not like a massive swoosh and dip in like the, the larger economy, which I don't care too much about the larger economy, but if that's enticing for you, I think it's um, definitely an interesting point. But yeah, I think I want to, there to be a larger influence or larger importance placed on other gift giving holidays and especially birthdays rather than Christmas. I think Christmas should be more of a time about, or Solstice, Christmas, New Year's, that whole sort of area should be more about um, spending time with your loved ones and focusing on traditions that are really meaningful for you and like reevaluating the year as a whole and like taking a break rather than materialism. Which um, feeds very nicely into my next point, which is focusing on other traditions, other holiday traditions that you might have other than gift giving. So, um, as I've gotten older, I've gotten more into like um, the solar holidays, like the solstice um, and traditions that go along with that. And also the various non-present related traditions that I have associated with Christmas. So um, this year it's going to be a little different during COVID, but I'm going to do more of those traditions that don't have to do with presents. You know, for New Year's, I'm going to make a lemon pig and for solstice, I'm going to light some wishing leaves and um, Stockings go along with gift giving a little bit, but they're they're slightly separate to me because that's more food presents than like item presents. So consumables are pretty good for minimalism. 
Um, not always for zero waste, depending on what kind of consumables you get. But so that kind of tradition and of getting presents for the dogs, those are, those are traditions that aren't about materialism for me. And I'm sure you out there in your families have other holiday traditions that aren't about presents that can really bring you closer together and maybe make for an overall more meaningful and like wholesome holiday. Uh, I'm going to put cloves and oranges. It's going to be great. I'm excited. I think it's important to focus on these traditions and not just because they're traditions, but finding the ones that really make your heart sing and like bring you closer together with your loved ones, whoever you're celebrating with, even if that's just your plants. But those sorts of traditions can like, I don't know, they make me really happy. I hope you out there have some traditions like that, or you can find some that make you really happy that aren't about gift giving specifically. Um, and also just a quick note about um, decor, because that's something that people bring up a lot about um, the holidays. You know, you got to decorate for Halloween, you got to decorate for Thanksgiving, you got to decorate for Christmas, you got to decorate for New Year's, all these things. There's, there's people that really constantly have a holiday decoration. I mean, like, other than the grocery stores. But like, I don't know, who decorates for Valentine's Day? That seems like unnecessary. I mean, it is Oregon's birthday, which don't decorate for that either. <laughs> um, but yeah, so all of my holiday decorations are things that are at least have at least two functions if they're not like totally multifunctional. Um, so I have I put my stockings out really early this year because I just needed a little bit of holiday cheer. Um, they just they work really well on my shelf out there. Um, so I have my sock stockings decorations. That's a decoration, but it's also functional in that it is going to be used for, you know, stuffing presents in. Um, and then a Christmas tree. I don't know if this counts as multifunctional to everybody else, but it does to me because a Christmas tree is both a holiday decoration and it also smells amazing. And I have a lot of nostalgia around like choosing out a tree and like the smell of it, which isn't the same here as it was back home, but is an essential part of Christmas. And so like finding out what decor is essential to you and like has nostalgia and sentiment for you. And also the things that are multifunctional, like those are the two things to consider, like how much sentiment do you need and how can you make it multifunctional? Um, also just like how much decor do you need? Cause I feel like a lot of Christmas decor, especially like not so much like Halloween decor and other kinds, but Christmas decor, especially like, I feel like sometimes it's just in the way, like you trip on it and like how much of it is like essential and how much of it is clutter and how much of it do you really need to have a good holiday? Because I think holidays in how I think of them are supposed to be times that you can like come together with your loved ones and like bond and create happy memories. And so, I mean, if nothing else, focus on that and the less emphasis on consumerism will hopefully follow. Um, I think it has for me and, you know, lists and asking questions and focusing on other gift giving holidays can facilitate that. But really, um, give your loved ones a hug today if you can. Thanks for hanging out with me and Cecilia, my Christmas gift from last year. And um, see you next week with another video about minimalism. Thanks for coming, everybody. Bye.